I'm getting a lot of messages from viewers telling me that they're planning on getting their first snake. Congratulations, that's fantastic, and well done doing your research ahead of time before the animal is relying on you to care for it. So I'm going to give you a list of a number of things that you might want to think about as you are doing your planning. Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. This is Damara, she's gonna hang out with me for a little while. This channel is usually very specific to ball pythons, but the information that I'm gonna to give today is gonna to work for any snake. So if you're planning on getting a snake, this will be good information for you. Behind the camera, as always, is my brother Kent. Kent is the only employee here at Green Room Pythons, and he refuses to work with the pythons out of extreme fear. Why do you have to say it like that? Just say I'm an employee. Nobody has to know that I'm uncomfortable with something. Okay, well then just tell us a few ways that you might prepare for a new snake. Stock up on weapons in case of an attack. Uh, get plenty of anti-venom. All right, we're gonna assume the new snake is non-venomous. Even still, have plenty of anti-venom. For your non-venomous animal? Yes, I don't know, I'm not a veterinarian, just just have some. Interesting points you make, Kent. Uh, you can keep those in mind if you like. I'm gonna put tomorrow away and then we're gonna go to the board. I have a board, you guys. I have a new board. Anyway, we're gonna talk about some of my ideas of how you can prepare for a new snake. You guys, we're getting fancy in the green room. Look at that, I've already written stuff on it. Oh, what about colors, you ask? Colors, how about yellow? I'm about to write something in yellow and I have other colors, so we're fancy here. You're clearly already doing research if you're watching this video, but I just want to touch on this for a second. I've mentioned this in other videos before, uh, and it applies to all species of snake. No matter how docile a species of snake you're getting, it's still an exotic animal. It's not domesticated. So it's not an animal that's necessarily going to just easily fit into living with a human. So I think it's important, regardless of what type of animal it is, if you are in the care of an exotic animal, you should be an expert of that animal. So if you are in the care of an exotic animal, if you are in the care of an exotic animal, like every day all of your meals are prepared by a Japanese salamander. Hi, I'm Future Bob. I edit videos for Past Bob and correct any mistakes that he makes or just make fun of him when he misspeaks. Let's say you need medical attention, but don't worry because here comes a raccoon. You are in the care of an exotic animal. Well said, Bob. Well said. Let's keep going with this. So doing as much research as possible, watching as many videos from all kinds of different YouTubers out there because you're going to find that some have good information, some have bad information, some YouTubers you like, some you, you might not relate to so you don't watch theirs. So just get your fill of as much information as you possibly can. Read articles, watch videos, do what you need to do to become an expert in the species that you're dealing with. The wrong way to do it is the people that buy a snake on a whim, bring it home, throw it in a fish tank, and it's their new house accessory for as long as it survives. Uh, you're obviously not doing it that way though. Like I said before, congratulations, you're doing your homework. Nice job, let's continue. Prep the room. Even if you don't plan on having your snake free crawling all over the room, there's one thing that you really need to consider, and that is that snakes have a very simple and very sensitive respiratory system. So anything that creates smoke is a problem. Get rid of any incense, candles. Uh, if you plan on having a snake in a room that's got like a wood burning fireplace that sometimes creates smoke, uh, maybe reconsider where you're keeping your snake, you know, put, put them in a different room. Um, and then anything that just creates a strong smell, like a, like a scented candle or essential oils, or, you know, keep your aunt that wears way too much perfume out of there. I, and if you wear too much perfume, t uh, stop it anyway. Just it's, I was on a hike recently just here in the Hollywood Hills. And every time I'm on this hike, I'll pass a group of people with the strongest perfume in the woods, put just dousing themselves in perfume to go in the woods. Please don't do that. I realize this is Los Angeles and that you're gonna run into people like that, but 
There's no reason for it. Really, that's... Anyway, that's not this video. This video is about snakes, and let's move on. Know what you are getting. This is uh, very specific to a certain type of transaction. If you're going and getting a snake at a pet shop or, or from somebody local or something like that, you know what you're getting. But if you're ordering a snake specifically off of like Morph Market or something like that from a breeder, a lot of times those snakes were listed when that baby was a hatchling. And those are the photos that you're looking at. And that's the weight that's still listed on that Morph Market page or whatever whatever site you're on to, to get your snake. Uh, it's really common that, and this has happened to me a number of times and I just plan for it now. It's really common that, uh, you buy a snake that says it's 120 grams and here's what it looks like. It'll fit in the palm of your hand, whatever. But that post was made a year ago and that snake is now a year old and quite a bit bigger. So know what you're getting because you've got to set up your enclosure, plan for food and do all that stuff for the size of snake specifically that you're getting. So ask that breeder, especially if they're a really big breeder and they have hundreds of snakes, uh, they might not have time to just run and check. So ask them to run and check. Just make sure that you know what size that snake is because you don't want to surprise. You don't want to set up your whole enclosure and the snake show up and all of a sudden you can't use anything that you've set up because the snake's too big. Set up well ahead. So now that you know exactly what size snake you're getting, put their enclosure together and have your heat mat running, your thermostat running for several days to let it settle in before you get your snake. So don't go to the pet store and get a vivarium and a heat mat and a thermostat and a snake and bring it all home because you've got several days of messing with that thermostat and moving it up and down and things like that. It's way too hot one day, so you bump it down and then it's too cool. Uh, it takes a few days to settle in. If you're going bioactive, like, like this enclosure right here, that's a 30 day thing. Have that prepared 30 days before because you need your plants to settle in and your isopods and springtails, stuff like that. But at least for, I would say for a regular non-bioactive enclosure, set it up a week in advance. Give yourself that time to mess with it and get it perfect before your snake shows up. Location. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't matter. It says location. Uh, be a realtor for your snake and find it the perfect location. And here's the important thing about that. Uh, this is not a how to put an enclosure together video. There's, I have a couple of those actually that will help you with that. But uh, when you do that kind of research, also put yourself in the snake's shoes. Imagine yourself inside that enclosure and you're a snake. One of the important things and the most important thing to your snake when you bring it home is not food, it's not water, it's security. So that's the only thing that it wants. So if you have it in a big glass enclosure and you can see at like put yourself into the enclosure mentally and you can see everything that's going on in this room. And this is a crazy like to, to your new snake. You are a monster and these are monsters that are giant and you don't know if they're going to murder you or not. And they're bumbling around all over the place and they have this dog that's also a giant monster. Uh, keep that in mind when you find a location for your snake. So you want it in a quiet area of the house. You don't want it in the high traffic area where people are bounding by and stuff like that. Um, they can later on in life, especially if when they get a little bit older and get used to you and get used to the people in your house, you could maybe put the, put them in a more central area in the home once they're sort of used to the rhythm of the, of the house. But for now, in the beginning, keep them in a sort of quiet, low traffic area. Plan for the size that your snake is going to be at in a year, two years, three years, five years down the road. You know, you can buy a ball python that is super cute and fits in the palm of your hand. And a few years down the road, they'll get the size of Damara. And that's about as big as, the, you know, sometimes they'll get a little bit bigger. Damara is a pretty big ball python. And that's usually not a problem for most people, but for some it could be. That could be way too big of a snake for you. And uh, so you've got to consider that. If you buy a really cute baby Burmese python, they're beautiful and they're so cheap and they fit in the palm of your hand. They're so cute, but they get massive. So several years down the road, you're going to need a six, eight, 10 foot enclosure, big giant thing. Same with the reticulated python. Um, uh, you buy a super dwarf reticulated python and you go, oh, this won't get 
big like a reticulated python you know a regular mainland one but you didn't realize that the person that you bought it from bred a super dwarf to a mainland and the mother's a mainland and it, it, this super dwarf is going to take after the mother and it's still going to be a 12, 13 foot snake. Uh, so know what you're getting and plan for the size. Make sure that you have room in your place and you have, uh, you have uh, a plan for caging, you know, going from an appropriate size cage for a baby up the stages as your snake gets bigger. If you're planning on getting a hognose snake, don't even worry about it. You've made a fantastic choice of a small snake that's just adorable all the time. If you planned on a corn snake or something like that, not as big of a deal. But pythons, boas, things that get very big, plan on that. Equip yourself. So aside from enclosures and what you need for your enclosure and things like that, you need things immediately like a heat gun. You need this temperature gun to check the surface temps of your enclosure. Don't just rely on your thermostats to do it right. You've got to, you've got to check with a temp gun. Um, a snake hook, if you need a snake hook. I don't have one because I have ball pythons and I don't need them with, with ball pythons. You, you may. You may feel comfortable using a snake hook with your ball python. Or you might be getting the type of snake that you really do need to do some hook training with and things like that. So you need a snake hook right away. Especially if you're planning to hook train your snake and they're just a little baby and you're not too worried about it, you're not scared of them now. Uh, get a little hook and start the training now. You don't want to start the training once they are bigger and are striking at you. Uh, so that kind of stuff, you know, cleaning supplies, hand sanitizer, stuff like that, feeding tongs, heat packs, or just a backup system for just in case your heat fails, you know, you get a power outage or something like that, have some, have some reptile specific heat packs. I think they're called Uniheat. You can look on Amazon for those. Don't use hand warmers because they get way too hot. But there are things that you need to have aside from just the enclosure and stuff like that. Just little equipment things for your snake. Plan for the food. This is something that people don't think about a lot. They go, oh, I'm going to feed my snake rats, no problem. And I've heard a lot of instances where people realize that they don't have a good source of rats. Like they don't, they live in a small town that doesn't have a pet store that sells feeder rats. And uh, you can buy frozen rats online in bulk. That's what I do. But I have a lot of snakes and I had a dedicated freezer for frozen mice and rats. Uh, so that works for me. But if you just have one snake, that might not work. Um, there's also things like African egg eating snakes and you buy a baby because it's adorable and you're going to feed it eggs, which is way nicer than feeding it other animals. But where are you going to get little finch eggs? And there are other types of snakes. I'm trying to think of a, of a type and I can't, but other snakes that, that eat reptiles primarily. And you can work with them to switch them to rodents, which are much easier to source. But before they're switched, where are you going to get anoles or whatever they're eating at the time? So that's something that uh, tends to sneak up on people as a as a problem. They don't realize that they have a problem obtaining food for their snake until after they get their snake. So don't let that sneak up on you. Find a vet. That's another one that sneaks up on people. A lot of folks don't think about this until they immediately need a vet. And that is that you can't just take your snake to the same person that you take your dog and cat to. Uh, I feel fortunate that in my area, I have a choice of exotic vets and my favorite one happens to be a mile and a half away from me. So if I ever do need a vet, it's very easy for me to get my snake the treatment that it needs. But I realize that that's not the case in most parts of the country. Um, many people have a snake that need a vet and all of a sudden they realize that there's not an exotic vet within 300 miles of them. So have a plan for care just in case an emergency happens uh, or not even an emergency, you know, some respiratory infection, something like that. You got to take your snake to the vet. Um, so have a plan for that before it's necessary. The last one on my list is kid proof and cat proof your enclosures. I almost didn't think of this one, but there was a recent post and there's been a couple of them lately about cats that have gotten in through the screen and either the screen on top of the, of the, um, tank or whatever. Uh, and they've either injured the snake or just let the snake out. Cat goes in, snake goes out and the snake's gone now. Um, and also if you have toddlers, you don't want to have an enclosure that that can just open and close. You need to have a lock on it. 
So my bioactive vivarium has the option for a lock. I don't use it because I don't have toddlers in my house, but uh, that's really important because to, again, the snake is probably not going to hurt the child. I mean, maybe it would, it depends on the snake, but probably not. It's the, the danger is the kid opens the door to look at the snake or whatever and doesn't close it and your snake gets out. They're really hard to find sometimes when they get out and oftentimes you never find them again. So kid proof and cat proof your snake enclosure. Okay, you guys, I think we did it. Kent, do you have anything to add? Yes, Kent's Corner. Do you have anything to say for Kent's Corner? I just thought of something. All right, we'll go do a really quick Kent's Corner then. Hi, I'm Kent, and this is the corner where I do my critically acclaimed segment, Kent's Corner. I hope you're enjoying the Green Room Pythons video, How to Prepare for a Snake. I'm starting my own company called Green Room Fish. Here's my first video. How to prepare for a fish. Step one, put water in a bowl. Step two, buy a fish. Do you see how easy that is? Why are you even messing with snakes? You're happy with that Kent's Corner? Yeah. Fantastic. Folks, uh, quick announcement. We are very close to a thousand followers. We're well over 900 at this point. I had a, a viewer ask me if at a thousand followers, if I would do a uh, Q&A, like a YouTube live Q&A. And I think that's a fantastic idea. So whenever I hit that thousand followers, the next video I'll announce when the live will be. It'll be sometime probably in the evening of that week. And, uh, you know, hopefully people can jump in and we'll do a little Q&A. So if you haven't subscribed yet, Hit the subscribe button uh, if, you, if you'd like to, and it'll help me get to a thousand followers sooner. Hit whatever buttons you'd like. Um, do me a favor, put down in the comments, first of all, put down anything that I missed that could be on this list of what to prepare for. So I'm sure there's a million things that I could have had on this list that I didn't, but it'd be nice to have the list keep going in the comments section. And also comment and let me know what kind of snake you're planning on getting next. What are you picking up? I'm really curious. And uh, that's it. I think we did it, you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.